Hi, and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Um, this time we're gonna tie the scuds. As you can see, I have um, I have three patterns, or mm, I have three colors of scuds that I like to have in my fly box, and uh, I don't have any other colors. These are the three colors I use. And uh, the fly, we're gonna we're gonna tie all of them. We're gonna tie each and one of these three scuds. I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, the orange one and the olive one, it's the same pattern, you know, uh, and also cover basin, they, they're, they're tied in the, in, in, you know, the same way, but, but there are some, you know, some small techniques I want to show you. But first of all, if you don't want to listen to the intro, you can go down in the description of this video and you can see I have on the top, I have put a link to the where the fly tying starts, so you don't have to listen to the intro. Just click on the numbers, and it will go take you directly to the fly tying. Okay, because uh, I like to you know explain everything why and this and that. And so I'm going to do that in the intro. So yeah, so go down in the description. So as you can see, I have put up three scuds. Uh, you can see I have a copper button. It's a copper. Uh, scud and I have uh, uh, the fluorescent fluorescent orange one uh, that's uh, tied with the seal's fur and uh, you have a dark olive or olive dark olive or olive both of them work great but here I like to use I have used the dark olive for for many years and it seems to work great and if you don't have you know uh, if you don't want to tie with seal's fur you can use some natural fur or something but it's important that it is a fluorescent orange because that works great when the water is murky or crystal clear it kind of works all year round and 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 you need a a scud that's you know like a olive or brown one i i just chose a, a, a dark olive it's i've been using it for over 20 years and they work great so um uh, and the hook we're gonna use it's a tmco um a 2457 scud hook uh, in a size six, I tie every um, every one of my scuds. I tie with the size six, uh, and I know many of you like to tie them even smaller, size eight and ten. But for me, when I I need that confidence and knowing that I have a size six hook, the wire, you know, the wire on this hook is so strong, and I've caught a, you know, I got one uh, sea trout. I think it weighed about. It was over two kilos, I think 2.2 .2 or 2.1 kilos on the only one. And I was, you know, I, I saw the fish was rising and I saw it was a big fish. I had the scud on and I knew just if it takes, the hook is going to hold and, you know, it's strong. So that's just my personal opinion. And I mean, if I want a small fly, I just make a smaller body. So uh, another thing is uh, I don't like to, to tie, you know, to make the... Uh, the scud too curly you know i don't like to tie all the way down because if you watch a scud when it swims in the water they, they don't swim like this <laughs> and they don't have their tail down like in a in a curl cur curve curve like that the the tail is out like this and the because then the legs are free to make it swim it, 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 i mean so i like to tie the body a little bit shorter and uh, and I like to brush it so it kind of mimics the legs and, and the tail so actually the scud swims like this like this they don't go like this so but that's how they kind of behave in the water but when I fish the scud I like to and 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 wait let it uh, sink down and then it seems to work great that way i haven't tried to fish the scud like like they swim you could but for me i like to fish them like that so it kind of you know how they act and how you fish the flies sometimes uh, they don't kind of represent each other they they it seems like the fish want when the sea trout sees a little you know cobble bosom or a fluorescent orange fly when they when the fish see the fly it kind of triggers them, you know, when they see the fly goes like in the water, they get all fired up and they take the fly. So that's my experience. So, okay. So uh, I think we're going to start off with the cobble basin. 
This is a fly you need to have in the box all year round. It works when the water is murky. It works when the water is crystal clear. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's a fly that works all year round. You can, you know, you need to have this box in your fly. Uh, you need to have this fly in your box. <laughs> Sorry, I get, I get so excited, you know, and I mess up the words. Okay, the dubbing. For uh, uh, Kobobasen, originally the fly is made with like copper dubbing, ice dub copper. But as you can see, I have it, uh, the, the, the color I have is more golden and not that flashy, but flashy enough. And I, nowadays I mix these two. So this is uh, from Futurefly, uh, signature dubbing Red Fox. Red Fox. And I use this one, Antique. And I mix these to 50-50. 50-50. And I just mix them with your hands because this is uh, this this dubbing uh, is used mostly used for salmon flies because the fibers are quite long. So I mix them with my hands, and the the result is like as you can see, uh, it's very nice. As you can see, uh, if you've watched my videos earlier, I, I like to use uh, copper wire, thick copper wire, and I've been pulling out copper wire from all TVs for many, many, many years. And uh, last year uh, I, I was tying at a fair, a uh, Norwegian fly, or not, it's kind of well, some wilderness camp or something. And, uh, and uh, during that time, uh, the Semperfly crew, they were just uh, over uh, at the opposite side of me, having their stand and Andy came over to me and you know, uh, hi, my name is Andy, blah, blah, blah. I represent blah, blah, blah. and uh, Semperfly, <laughs> and, and he was showing me the tying thread that I started using, you know, the, the Semperfly wax thread, the 6O. And we were talking, and uh, he came over with some copper wire, and I think, oh, and I looked at the, the, the thickness, it was 0.3 millimeters, and I said to Andy, this is too thin for me, I need a thicker wire, and he was like, oh, how thick do you want it? And I was like, uh, 0.5? And he was like, okay, I can, I can make you a sample. What color do you want? And I was like, are you kidding me? No, 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 we make our own copper wire and I can make that for you. And I was like, yay. A week or so later in the mailbox, Andy, you know how much I appreciate this. Uh, now you can actually buy the thick wire in your shop. I, I think everyone has it. So if you, you know, the, the same color I want, it's varnished, so you know it's much more more uh, resistant for salt water. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. This helps me out a lot. Let's put in a hook. I'm gonna start in the middle, like that, and snip off your thread. And I'm gonna tie in the copper wire. And here, and actually, I'm just gonna leave the copper wire on the, the spool because then I don't get any waste. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tie it by the tip on the top and go down. Nice and nice and nice and tight. And actually we're gonna stop there. I don't want to tie it any further down than this. And I'm gonna leave my spool of copper wire. It fits perfect on my, bob, uh, on my tying wise. I'm gonna show you, look. Schmack. <laughs> so now I don't have to, you know, snip off a piece and get the waste and everything. Yeah, so. Okay, I'm going to take some dubbing. And I'm going to dub this fly in. I used to dub this fly in two sections. Because it's important that you don't make a too thick dubbing noodle, you know. And I'm gonna, if you're going to try this dubbing, you're going to see that the fibers are quite long. And it's easy to dub. So make a thin dubbing noodle and prepare your, this is my index finger. And I'm gonna, for every turn, I'm gonna kind of, you know, support the dubbing or what should I say, groom, groom it? Yeah, brush it. Because then like, it's gonna tighten up and it's gonna let you, you know, dub quite fast and the body is gonna be nice and firm. You see that? This is the first section and I'm gonna la dub the last section. I, I'm uh, dividing it up in two so I have full control and, and the body gets, you know, nice and firm. So, more dubbing. Please, 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 I say this so many times that don't put on too much. It's just gonna mess up your fly and, and you're gonna, you know, yeah. So again, use your finger, 
nice i think i need a little bit more no it's perfect 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 pull everything back and now as you can see i've made a millimeter space you know to making the head and you need that millimeter because we're going to tie over the copper wire so like i'm going to do it now i'm going to make a half hitch i'm going to put my thread over at the you know this this one i don't know if you have this one I don't know what it's called, it's called some kind of bobbin holder or, yeah. Like that, and then I'm gonna rib. And I'm gonna start by pulling it back. And I'm just gonna use my rotary vise. If you don't have a rotary vise, just, you know, do it the, uh, you know, the old traditional way. Three, four, five, and six goes in the corner of the hook. You see and pull it tight and use the pliers snip it off leave about a millimeter because we're going to take our thread and we're going to cross four or five and we're going to use our nail to whip that little one back and we're going to finish off with a nice red head we finish that's it we're going to brush and varnish and the fly is done Snip off. I'm going to use my Velcro, you know. And I like to brush it on the sides. Brush, brush. And a little bit on the top. Pull out some fibers like that. And I like to roll the fibers in my fingers. So I make a little tail. And that's perfect. That's so perfect. You see, I have a pretty straight body. I don't like to, as I told you, I don't like to tie it all the way down there. I want it to be... A little bit looking, it needs to look a little bit more like a scud. And also, I've been doing this for quite a while now. I use a lighter and I hold and I just do like that because then you, you burn off every of the small fibers that sticks out sometimes, you know. So your eye, hook of the eye is, is so nice and clean. Okay, let's finish off this fly with some varnish. Uh, it's important to varnish your flies. I always do that because of the salt water. So that's that's the cobble button. And then we're going to tie Loppa, the scud. As you can see, it's nice and bushy, but it also it's a quite, pretty thin body, okay? This is tied with fluorescent orange seal's fur. Okay? And it, it works all year round. If the water is murky, it's same as the copper button. If it's crystal clear, these flies work so great. Same hook. Same technique. Just fasten your thread. Take your copper wire. Tie it in on the top of the hook. And you also can... It's no problem if you want the, the, the copper wire to kind of... Go over to the far side of the hook like that. Can you see? Yeah. And go down. Stop there. I'm going to put my copper wire there. And we're going to start dubbing. And now we're going to dub with seal spur. And that's, for many people, it's hard. But the clue to dub seal spur is to have just a small, a small amount of fibers in your hand. Okay? And you need to use some force. You need to be, you know, come on give it in and if you're still struggling you can make you can take a couple of turns so you the the the, the small fibers in in there they kind of hook up and then you can start your make your dubbing noodle nice and thin and and make sure your finger is ready for every turn i groom the fibers i help them around and we're gonna make the back body. As you see, I, I made sure my thread went tung, 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 tung. Nice and tight. Don't go like that. Make sure the thread goes in between every fiber. It's gonna make a, a very durable body. One more time, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna tie in the front part. Actually, I think I took a little bit too much. I don't want that. And uh, these flies work so great for sea trout. And this color actually uses uh, works 
very good in uh, for brown trout in the big lakes very good for for grayling yeah are you ready chung, 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 chung. just use your finger full control and stop a millimeter in the front like that pull back one two three four half hitch schmuck bada boom and i'm gonna rib our fly use the same technique as we did with the copper the copper copper scud <laughs> one two three four five and six goes up pull it snip it off one two three four five o'clock rock and then push that one back make a nice big red head and finish off with a whip finish and two three four five <laughs> snip off your thread take your brush brush the sides one side and a little bit on the top and then pull everything back like that and as you can see here you can see some of the small fibers in the front i don't like it because when i'm going to varnish these things get super sharp and i'm just going to go like that and it's Ooh, ooh, nice, 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 nice. And also, as you can see, uh, this is a little technique I've been using for many years, and I actually never told anybody about it because I haven't, you know, I haven't think about it. But people were starting to uh, question me. Uh, I mean, your flies look like they've been fished, you know, like they are so perfect. And actually, I just, after I, you know, I'm going to do like that. And that heat, I put my finger over that heat, and I transfer the heat to the fibers and rolling it back like that it sort of looks like the fly is you know been fished and it looks pretty nice so that's a little bit technique be careful so you don't burn yourself i hold the fibers i don't want to burn off like that and i use i do that with the the scuds so finish off with some varnish be careful with the with the with the lighter. Sometimes the, the whole thing just burst in the flames. So, and of course, if you've been using super glue or something, don't don't use a lighter. <laughs> that that doesn't work at all. <laughs> okay, that's the orange scud. I'm gonna finish off showing you the olive scud. It's the same fly, just different color. Okay, that's the only one. Dark olive. So let's start off with a hook. Also, I'm going to use red thread. I like it. It's it's sort of what I do, you know, my red thread. Tie in the copper wire. I'm going to do this a little bit faster. Stop there. Leave your spool of copper wire down on if you have. This is so perfect. And also, as you can see, I have kind of should I say I have glued on this this uh, nut I'm going to show you later why I do that because I use this for my dubbing loops so it keeps the loop open that's just a little I'm going to show you later in another video okay that's a nice nice little trick there okay so we're going to use dark olive same here we're going to tie in the back the back body you know I'm using a lot of force really really and if i'm struggling i'm not struggling now it's, it seems to be uh, grabbed on in the corner there but if you're struggling you can take one two three and then do it again it's going to help you nice and firm dubbing noodle it's a thin dub thin dubbing noodle start in the back use your finger nice and tight tung, 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 tung. stop in the middle and do the front Remember you guys, I've, I've been tying these flies for many, many years. I have tied hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these flies. So this is, you know, I've been practicing for many years. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you about the technique. And the technique we are using with the finger, it, it makes these flies so easy to tie. I see I'm going to put on a little bit more. See how nice and loose. Oh, done. 
pull everything back. In two, three, one, two, three, half hitch. And I'm gonna put on this one and I'm gonna use my rotary vise. I'll start off in the back. One, two, three, four, five o'clock rock and six goes up. Do 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 son. Snip off. Boom boom. Shaka boom. One, two, three, four, five. Use your nail. Push it back. Do one, two, three, four, five. And finish off your fly. And there you go. You have tied three amazing patterns for scud. Yes, you could put uh, some shell back and everything, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. Really, I like it like that. And as you can see, the, the fibers are kind of... So we can manipulate them just by... In the same as you, I'm going to burn off every small little fiber. I'm going to grab the heat and I'm going to slowly just going to go like that. Transfers the heat and the fly looks amazing. <laughs> okay. Finish off with varnish. Like that, bada bim, bada boom, and we're done. There you have it. Oh, there you have it. Kobebasen loppa. Yes, we're gonna call it the scud. It's, uh, the Norwegian is loppa. Loppa. Dark olive, loppa. And we have kobebasen, and we have a fluorescent orange, loppa. Scud flies, okay? Yeah. So there you go, that's that's my scuds. I don't have these scuds in, you know, in a gray color or in a brown color or white and pink. You sure can, but I have other flies that, you know, white ones. I have a fly called Fnug. If I want a pig one, pink one, <laughs> I also have a fly called Fnug. <laughs> so these are the patterns I've been using for, yeah, many, many years and they work. You need these flies in your box. And as always, you know, you find the material is down below in the description of the video. And I'm going to leave the link to my sponsor down below. No, this is good speed. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Cheers. <laughs>